All right, so this video is going to be about the evolution or the change of atomic theory, basically how the atomic model has changed throughout the years. Okay, on this first on this first slide right here, I have um, pr probably the model that you're most used to for um, for the atom. Uh, in modern atomic theory evolved from contributions of many different thinkers and scientists over the years. This 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 model that you see right here didn't just didn't just happen. Um, all of a sudden, it took many, many, many years to kind of get this I idea. Now, some people um, threw out the change of this atomic model, um, thought about it. They used their imagination. Um, these are more like philosophers, um, while others actually did experiments, and these are scientists, to eventually get to a model that, that kind of, that, you know, that looks like this or looks like something that you guys might be used to. Um, and basically, this lesson is on how those ideas have changed um, throughout the years and changed our understanding of the nature of the atom. Uh, so one of science, uh, science's chief goals is, is to create models. In this case, this would be uh, a model for an, ad, uh, for an atom. Um, but these models are used to uh, describe the world around us, which is related a lot to, the, to how uh, our class is, is uh, describing models of, 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 of matter, models of, uh, of the stuff that we're going to cover in chemistry. But these models change as new evidence comes along. So if, if more evidence comes, then the model changes um, and, and, and that's why it's funny when people think, oh, science thinks they have all the answers. Um, that couldn't be further from the truth because science is continually looking for more evidence to change these models. Now, this model isn't very accurate, but there are three things that we can actually take away from it that are correct. One, that the atom is made of protons, electrons, and neutrons. Two, that most of the space is taken up by the area of the electrons. As you can see, the electrons are going around it. The nucleus is, is small. It's actually way smaller than... Um, than this picture here, it's not really to scale, but the electrons are, um, that they do take up more space, and that the protons and neutrons are at the center of the atom. So those three things are actually accurate with this model. But we're gonna start with a, with a complete history to kind of just go over how this model changed. All right, so the objectives for this lesson is to explain how and why the model of atoms has changed throughout the years, and to explain the importance of models in science. Okay, so the first one we're gonna talk about is this philosopher called Democritus, and he looks like a jolly, fellow right here. Okay, he's a Greek philosopher, and he was the first one to propose the ideas of the atoms, and he did this around 400 BC, so this was over 2,000 years ago. And he observed that objects could be divided into smaller and smaller pieces, but eventually there was a point where you couldn't divide any further, and we kind of talked about this in the previous video. So he concluded that all matter is made up of these small particles that are indivisible uh, and indestructible. And he, and he basically called them atoms based on atomos, which means indivisible in Greek. So he just used to, it's a Greek word, um, the, the root of atom is, is, is a Greek word. So he called them um, atoms. Now his beliefs, because he didn't really do experiments on this, was that um, atoms of different substances were distinct from each other. He just believed that, he had no reason to, and that the shape of the atoms defined the properties of the substance. Um, again, he had no reason to uh, believe that atoms had different shapes from one another, but that's just that's just what he believed uh, as, as a thinker, as a philosopher. All right, and then 2,000 years later, this guy John Dalton came around. This guy was actually a scientist, where Democritus was more of a philosopher. So Dalton was a scientist, uh, English physicist and chemist, and he was the father of modern atomic theory. That's what they call him. And... Uh, and Dalton's atomic theory was based on previous laws, law of conservation of mass and law of definite proportions, basically these other laws that scientists before him came up with. Um, and he supported the idea of the atom, that there was this indivisible um, piece of matter. And uh, he concluded that atoms were spherical, that, they, that different elements, atoms of different elements had different weights, and that he, they combined in whole number ratios to form compounds, which we're going to talk about later in the class. Um, so basically what, what he did in his experiments was he figured out that uh, the, way, the way matter bonds together or reacts together, it, it's based on whole number. So if, if things are based off whole number ratios, uh, then that kind of basically proves that there is this, this finite, this, this one uh, you know, indivisible particle or, or atom that causes things to bond because it didn't have to be whole number. It could have been it could have been fraction if there wasn't this this atom. It could be smaller than uh, than an atom, but be, because it's whole number, it kind of gave proof that there was these things called atoms. And it was widely accepted because there was scientific evidence for it. Where with Democritus, it was just his thoughts. Um, so basically, after Dalton, he he assumed that the, the atom looked like this. It was this spherical. He had no reason to give it any shape, so he just the shape he gave it was based on um, the ultimate 
ultimately symmetrical shape, which is a sphere, because it's symmetrical at, at any angle based on its center. So that, that's where we're at right now with our atomic model. It's a sphere um, in this timeline. Again, and this was, this was in the, the 1800s, late 1800s. Then J.J. Thompson came around, and he was the first one to discover the existence of electrons in, uh, in 1897. And, uh, and he experimented with these things called cathode ray tubes, which, are, which were basically just these, these electron tubes. Um, but they, cathode ray, I guess, sounds cooler. So, um, no, I'm just kidding. He just didn't, he didn't have a name for electrons back then. Um, but they were called cathode ray tubes. Um, and he observed that they were deflected towards a positively charged plate. And he concluded that a uh, cathode ray was made of negatively charged subatomic particles. And then he named them. Uh, electrons based on this. And the model changed. It started becoming called a plum pudding model, which I'm going to explain in this next slide right here. So this is basically what his experiment looked like. He had this electricity coming into this thing called a cathode, and it was negatively charged. Okay, And because it was negatively charged, it was going to repel anything that was negatively charged on this matter right here. And so it ended up shooting this negative field, basically these negative particles, over to this positive, this anode, over here. And there was a hole cut in it, so these, these negative charges were coming in and they were actually firing right through and lighting up this, this should say phosphor coating, um, and lighting up to prove that there was these particles that were actually interacting with other matter. Um, so basically through doing this, this experiment, he proved that the atom had a positive side, uh, a, po a positive part to it, and or a positive part to it and a negative part to it. And because the negative parts were the ones that moved easiest, he put those on the outside of his model. So his model started to look like this. Rather than just a sphere, it was a sphere with these negative particles on the outside of it and this positive stuff um, in, in the, is the basis of it. So there's no nucleus yet. There's no electrons going around the nucleus. Um, so far, it's just a sphere in our model. Um, and he called it plum pudding based on, I don't know if you've ever seen plum pudding before, um, but he, he based it off of like the pieces of plum on the outside of this, uh, of this dessert to be like the electron. So it's called the plum pudding bottle. Okay, next Ernest Rutherford came around. Um, he was a physicist from New Zealand and he actually became Thompson's student. Um, and he bombarded thin gold foil with positively charged particles called alpha particles. And there's a video I'm gonna show you that, that kind of explains this. So you have this radioactive source right here and it's shooting these things called, called alpha particles through this hole here. And then this is the gold foil. Now this gold foil is a few atoms thick, and because it's neutrally charged, the positively charged particles, these, these, these radioactive particles, they're called alpha particles, are going straight through it because there's no, there's no charge on this. So most of them are going straight through, and you can see the detector is detecting them back here. But, to their surprise, there's actually some scattering or some, some bouncing off of, of these positive um, particles, as you can see in this video that they were deflecting in other areas, but most of it was still going through. So this kind of changed the view of what they thought the atom looked like. And um, what this video is going to do, it's going to zoom up on this gold foil, which is only a few atoms thick again. And it kind of gives a better understanding of what's going on more at the atomic level and how the model actually needed to change based on the results of, of this. So here we go. We're zooming in now. And as you can see, it's a few atoms thick. And because there's a nucleus and the electron clouds around it, most of the most of the particles are flying straight through. But if they ever do actually interact with this nucleus, and these are positively charged particles coming in, they'll bounce off of it. So basically, what he proved in 1911 was that the mass of the atom is concentrated at its center, and then that center is actually positively charged. That's why the positively charged particles are bouncing off of it. So then this concluded that the electrons revolved around the nucleus in empty space. And that's why most of the particles were able to go right through because it was mostly empty space. Next came Niels Bohr, Danish physicist. He refined Rutherford's model because Rutherford's model couldn't explain why the negative electrons weren't getting attracted to the positive nucleus. Um, so he, he created this planetary model of the atom where an electrons revolve in circular orbits at fixed distances from the nucleus. And... Uh, so basically it looks like, the model looks like this, uh, and we're going to go over this more later in the class, that there's the nucleus at the center and then the electrons are going around at different energy levels, as you can see here. So we'll talk more about that later. And last but not least, we got Edwin Schrodinger. He was, in, he was from Austria, and he developed a mathematical equation to basically prove that, uh, that electrons 
go around the nucleus, but not necessarily in a circular orbit. Um, and this is based on another scientist's idea that electrons are, are, have properties of both waves and particles. So they're not just going around, they're actually um, wave functions as well, or they're, I shouldn't say wave functions, they're, they're, they go around, not just like planets go around, they're, they're actually, um, they're wavy. And uh, so basically the model turned into this thing called a, an electron cloud, um, and it looks something like this, where these, this, this cloud basically represents where the electrons are at a certain time. If it's shaded more, it's, it's where the electrons are more of the time compared to um, further out. But it, essentially this cloud is basically just a bunch of electrons zipping around randomly. But we'll talk more about that later. Um, so here is a basic timeline of the atomic model. So it starts off as a sphere um, with Democritus and, or Democritus, I'm sorry, John Dalton thought it was a sphere. And then going or a neutral sphere with no charges. And then Dalton proved that there was a, a positive and negative charge on this. And this is this plum pudding model with electrons on the outside of it, or on the outside of it, as part of the actual atom um, all together in one piece. And then Rutherford proved that the electrons are actually on the outside, and there's this, this positively charged nucleus at the center. And then from there, um, we got Bohr's model with um, different orbits for each electron, and then going to the electron cloud, um, which is where we are presently. So the basic take-home message for this um, long video is that scientists build models based on data, and then when new evidence or new data is collected, these models can change. If you have any questions on any of this stuff, uh, please let me know.